What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So the other day, Nintendo held their annual shareholders meeting where investors get to come in and ask Nintendo all kinds of different questions. And they had some pretty good ones here, asking things like, hey, what's going on with that Switch revision that was rumored by Bloomberg? Or do you have any other plans for hardware that's not Switch related necessarily? Like, hey, the Nintendo Classic or the Super Nintendo Classic system. We'll talk about Nintendo's answers here today. Also, we're gonna be going over an interesting partnership that was announced by Konami, could be leading to, I don't know, maybe a game in the Silent Hills series. And we're also gonna be talking about a new piece of hardware for the Game Boy, which would be a big deal for anyone who's concerned about, say, the save files on your Pokemon cartridges. Guys, if you enjoy the these videos make sure that like button helps out a ton and if you're new here to the spawn wave channel make sure you subscribe down below and ring that little notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the uploads that go up here on the channel and we're going to start today with playstation plus for the month of july we can head over here to playstation blog where they have the nice little card here showing us showing us the three different games that will be released in the month of July. These will become available July 6th and will run all the way until August 2nd. At the top there, we can see the PlayStation 5 game is A Plague Tale Innocence. That's a pretty good one, I would say, for uh, for the month for PlayStation Plus as the PS5 selection. And then we have two PS4 titles, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and WWE 2K Battlegrounds. Now, the one that I saw a lot of people talk about was Call of Duty, wondering why are they throwing like an older Call of Duty title in the PlayStation Plus? Well, they tend to do this, especially around when we're building up to that next big Call of Duty game to be announced, because if you think about it, this could potentially get people maybe just try out Call of Duty for like the first time or the first time in a while even. And if you get people into that Call of Duty mood, they might be looking out for that next big Call of Duty release or announcement. And it's big for the platform holder, that being Sony and Activision when these Call of Duty games release. But I think overall, pretty solid. Certainly worth checking out a Plague Tale. And obviously this is quite a bit better than what we just talked about with Games with Gold. Also, Halo Infinite is coming up here this holiday. We're still waiting for a release date, which could revolve around that Call of Duty announcement whenever that's coming out. But Phil Spencer did talk to IGN and IGN asked him, hey, how much is riding on this uh, Halo Infinite release? And this is what he had to say. I don't know if this is what you want me to say or not. I like when I think about the community, but I'm just being honest. I don't think about it that way, like the future of the franchise. Halo will be here 10 years from now. Is Infinite the linchpin on whether it survives that long? Absolutely not. The game has such a rabid fan base and such a history and lore that it's just an IP that's going to be with us. We don't take that for granted, but I definitely believe in my core that that is true. I mean, if you think about it, people are playing Master Chief Collection, myself included, and we're still playing the original Halo from like 2001. And it's a lot of fun still. So I'm happy to hear, yeah, uh, Master Chief not going away if Halo Infinite doesn't do well. And that shouldn't surprise anyone because Master Chief Collection released broken, like completely, but they stuck with it and they worked on it and they worked on it. And now it's a really good experience overall. So even if Halo Infinite comes out and it doesn't do well with reviews or even just performance when it comes to matchmaking in a, in a multiplayer game, which is pretty important for something like Halo, I believe they would stick with it. And as Phil Spencer says here, it's not make or break for the Halo franchise. Master Chief is a very important character for the Xbox brand. Like he says, even 10 years from now, despite whatever Halo Infinite does. Oh, and we've talked about the whole thing around Sega, Atlas, and, and Persona 4 Golden on Steam, how they were surprised at the reception. They were like, wow, people wanted to play Persona 4 Golden on something that wasn't a discontinued handheld that they can't find anymore? Huh, well, take a look at this right here. This was announced over on Twitter, where they say, a special broadcast from the Midnight Channel, Persona 4 Golden has sold 1 million copies on Steam. Thank you for your support. Uh, they also go on further to say that it is 40% off during the Steam Summer Sale. That's a pretty good pickup there, I would say. But uh, yeah, Persona 4 Golden is selling well. Seems to only be a surprise to Sega and Atlas, which is still so weird. I mean, come on, Persona 4 Golden, it's not even on the PlayStation 4, like, or PlayStation 5. It's so weird. That game should just be thrown everywhere, along with Persona 5 and, and any other Persona games they do in the future. It just seems like they're just losing out on money, but who knows? Maybe they have that plan for the future, and we just got to kind of wait for that announcement. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with this annual meeting of the shareholders that Nintendo held the other day, where they did have investors come up and ask them questions. Now, this was recorded online and then was translated using Google Translate. Nintendo should release like official translations in English that we can go back through and 
we'll do that when they do get released. But I thought it'd be interesting to kind of see their response here, even through kind of like uh, machine translation. Let's head over here. This was a question to uh, Nintendo, the president, Shintaro Furukawa. The question was, the announcement of Splatoon 3 was good and I was relieved that Switch could still be played next year. There was news of the new Switch and there was no announcement at E3 and the stock price dropped significantly. Is there anything I can do when rumors come out? What uh, will, will there be a new Switch in fact? Now this again, according to Mr. Furukawa saying, we publish information at the right time. I will refrain from talking about the new model. However, we will continue to pursue play in the future. So we will announce it when the time comes. And I know it says, uh, I will refrain from talking about the new model. Like, oh yeah, there's a new model. We're just not gonna talk about it yet. That is through the kind of the Google Translate. Again, I think when the official translation comes out, it'll probably say something a little different there. But the biggest part about this is that Nintendo is not outright denying it, which is what they've done before. They did this last year. They were like, yeah, no new hardware's coming. And everyone's just like, well, they're not gonna lie to their investors. So I guess we'll move on from the idea of a Switch revision releasing. They keep kind of skirting around the question when it comes to this thing. Whereas usually in the past, if they really don't have it, they're just like blunt. No, we don't have any extra hardware coming up. Please look forward to all of the software and all the games we're gonna release because that's where we're gonna make the majority of our money and kind of build our hype and our marketing cycle. Now there was also an article that popped up and this was from uh, an interview where Larian Studios, who is uh, creating Baldur's Gate 3, talked a bit about, I guess a survey, because Nintendo will go around and they'll talk to developers and say, hey, what would you like from, we'll say, future hardware for Nintendo. And Larian Studios did talk a bit about this interview saying, we have no idea what Nintendo is up to. And if we did, we couldn't say it either. Yeah, uh, obviously. But when Nintendo asked us for feedback as developers, we told them very clearly, either they bring out hardware with more power and memory or the Switch will become a new 3DS totally removed from the real world. I mean, that's pretty that's pretty straightforward, pretty blunt there from Larian Studios. And Nintendo clearly has taken feedback from different developers when they were creating their hardware. We had that entire story about how Capcom said, hey, we need a bit more RAM. The, the belief was that the Switch was going to release with like three gigabytes and they pushed up to four. And we kind of see why that is with something like Monster Hunter Rise clearly being in the planning stages, probably around the time that the Switch was coming out and Capcom wanted to get the RE engine onto the Switch and hey, Nintendo said, all right, let's do that. So here we are now with these rumors around a Switch revision and Nintendo not denying it straight up like they have before. It does sound more and more like we are working towards an announcement of some sort of Switch Pro, new Nintendo Switch. Uh, we'll see what it's called and what its capabilities are, but I wouldn't be shocked if Nintendo allowed third-party developers to just develop for that if they want to, first party stuff would just be across the board there. Now, would it be coming out in 2021? That's honestly the big question here because while Bloomberg can say, hey, they're they're getting all these OLED screens in, they're, they're, they're kind of gathering the parts. I feel like everyone would just be still guessing as to when Nintendo wants to announce it and then when they want to release it. Next up, let's stick with that shareholders meeting and talk a bit about the idea of maybe some other classic system like the Super Nintendo or Nintendo Classic, or maybe even another entry into the Nintendo Switch online. Let's take a look here. This was a question posed from an investor saying, what will you do to appeal to the parent generation of IP population expansion in the future? Is there any development other than Switch only Famicom and Super Nintendo, which were very good, such as mini Famicom? Nintendo's response was, I will refrain from giving specifics and I would like to receive your valuable opinions regarding the mini series, which has been involved in game making for 35 years and has been played by a wide range of generations. So indeed, that was a massive sidestep. Once again, Nintendo, they're usually pretty straightforward if they don't have anything planned and they're like, no, nothing right now, but we'll keep that in mind. This tells me that Nintendo at least has plans for some of their back catalogs of games going forward, which shouldn't surprise anyone because while they're not great games, for the most part, Nintendo does keep updating the Switch with Super Nintendo and Nintendo games. I think they're having this internal conflict right now because what, they're over a hundred games or close to it now on the uh, Nintendo Switch online and it's $20 a year. That's a lot of games to have on there for $20 a year. So I feel like Nintendo wouldn't mind putting 64 games on there as an example, but they're wondering, 
Wow, that we really are putting a lot into this Nintendo Switch Online for a very small fee. And you know Nintendo and how they value their IPs. They're looking to get full price at times for a collection of older titles like the Mario 3D Collection. So if they were to add N64 games to that online service, they'd probably look to either raise the price or separate this completely and maybe go with their own virtual console on demand type service. As for another system in like the mini series as was brought up here, it wouldn't surprise me to see them try Nintendo 64 Classic and maybe they did at one point and they were like, well, it's just, it's not up to our standards, our quality standards, because we have seen them do things like trademark that Nintendo 64 controller looked an awful lot like that Super Nintendo controller and the Super, or the Nintendo controller that was on the outside of the boxes for those systems, or just on the icons that we have on Nintendo Switch online. So I, I it wouldn't surprise me, like I said, if they did something with Nintendo 64, but what I would like to see is a classic system that's a handheld like the Game Boy Advance and throw some Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games on there and sell it through the holidays. That would be really cool. The thing with these mini series though, and you have to remember this, Nintendo's not necessarily selling them to make a bunch of money. It's just great marketing. Like people went crazy for the Nintendo Classic and the Super Nintendo Classic. Everyone was talking about Nintendo then. So it's just a way to kind of continue building up hype and marketing around the Switch by getting people to remember what Nintendo Nintendo was about maybe when they were younger and they look up to their latest console and then of course start buying games and subscribing to the service that has more of those games on it. Again, it just kind of works people into, well, Nintendo's ecosystem. Next up, let's talk about a big partnership that was announced by Konami with Bloober Team. Now, Bloober Team, some people may have played their games but still be kind of unfamiliar with the studio. Uh, for example, The Medium came out recently. Bloober Team did that one. They've also done things like Layers of Fear, Observer. So they're, they're pretty at least in tune with kind of the psychological horror side of things. And that kind of makes sense then for Konami to partner with Bloober Team if they are going to do a Silent Hill game. Let's head over here to VGC where they say Konami and Bloober Team have signed a new strategic cooperation agreement that will see the companies create games together. The new partnership between the Silent Hill publisher and the medium developer will include jointly developing selected contents and exchanging know-how, according to a statement released by Bloober Team. According to people with knowledge of Bloober's plans, one of the projects it's working on is Silent Hill related. However, VGC understands that Konami has already outsourced at least one other Silent Hill project to a prominent developer in Japan, and there could even be more developers working on their own projects. And I wanna kinda of jump to the bottom here because this makes a lot of sense, what we're about to look at here with Konami and kind of their mindset right now, where VGC says, in addition to Silent Hill, sources said that Konami also has plans to work on Castlevania and Metal Gear Solid games via external companies, but any potential releases are still years away. So Metal Gear Solid has been rumored for a while for Blue Point to be doing, and that would make sense as Sony would probably kind of sign the deal and get that all worked out with Konami. The idea of Castlevania, also one to keep an eye on, um, but going back here to Bloober Team, Silent Hill makes a lot of sense because there are actually two Silent Hill games that are rumored to be in development currently with Konami, really not doing a lot with it. The idea is Konami has IPs, like we just, Metal Gear, uh, they have Castlevania, and obviously Silent Hill. But we've seen Konami attempt to do some of these uh, developments with these series recently, Metal Gear Survive. It's like, do we need Konami really trying to create these games or would it be better for Konami to say, hey, would you like to develop a Metal Gear Solid game, a remake even with Blue Point, or would Bloober Team like to come in and make a Silent Hill game that's more on the psychological side of things, and we'll just collect money and revenue based on just the names and the IPs themselves? That makes sense to me, and it probably makes a ton of sense to Konami, who is certainly looking more in line with things like pachinko machines, but they still have very popular properties. Now, I did notice some people were kind of down on the idea of Bloober Team. Uh, it really comes down to if you like their style of horror game, which is not going to be necessarily as combat and action driven. Again, more of the psychological horror, which if there are two Silent Hill games in development as is currently being rumored, you'd want them to be pretty different, wouldn't you? Like, so let's say Bloober Team makes one that is closer to like layers of fear, or even the medium. And then we have another studio make one that maybe is a bit more action oriented, I think that would be uh, the right way to kind of go about things here. So I am curious what Bloober Team could come up with here. Certainly they must have pitched something to Konami that made them go, oh, well, 
that would actually be really cool to do with something like the Silent Hill property. I mean, look at the medium. It at least introduced an interesting new mechanic into kind of the horror game space. So I am curious what Bloober Team could have here for Silent Hill going forward. And like I said, this partnership announcement, to be honest, just leads to lends more credence to what Nate has been saying for a little while now. So we'll see if we have another Silent Hill game coming up here in the future for an announcement. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about the GB Operator, which is a really cool looking accessory that'll allow you to take your Game Boy games and plug them into your PC. Take a look at this here. This is their page. And we can see it's currently going for $49.99 plus shipping, supports Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advanced. And it looks, yeah, just like a little cartridge slot, runs to your PC, but there's quite a bit of functionality here. And one in particular makes a ton of sense, uh, which involves you being able to back up your save games. Now, the idea here is when you plug it into your PC, you can use the MGBA emulator and just play it directly on your computer, or you can back up your save files, which would then allow you to change the battery out without worrying about losing that save. So if you have, for example, a Pokemon game that has the Pokedex completely full, but you've been sitting there worrying about that battery that's just gonna die in a couple of years, or who knows, maybe it's on its last leg, this is a great way to back up that save file and then replace it with a new one. And then you can put the save file right back on the cartridge itself. That is a really cool idea. And you can even, apparently, take the Game Boy camera and pull the pictures that you take on there off of it onto your PC. They also mentioned developing homebrew and playing it on original hardware, as well as counterfeit cartridge detection. The idea here is if you say are at a convention, I guess, and you have your laptop and this, you can plug it in and it'll tell you if it's an original cartridge or if it's one that say came off of eBay and it has like a funny looking label and it's not an original. Um, that is something that is pretty prominent right now online. You see it all over the place where games like Minish Cap or the different Castlevanias or certainly those Pokemon games are having uh, counterfeit or reproduction cards kind of passed off as authentic. This would allow you to at least check it and then I guess if it's a fake, you can hopefully send it back or just not buy it at all if you're at a convention. I went ahead and picked one of these up. It says shipping time somewhere between August and September. So maybe we'll do a video checking this out, seeing if we can pull like a save game off of a Pokemon game and then putting it back on there after changing the batteries and I have a couple of fake cartridges laying around here we can even test that so really cool idea looking forward to checking this one out in a couple of months and before we go to the comment of the day we're taking a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday where I asked how do you feel about Bloober Team being partnered with Konami for what will most likely be a Silent Hill game hey 30% of you said I like it Bloober Team has made some interesting games 16% said I don't like it I haven't enjoyed their previous games then 53% said, I'm not interested in Silent Hill either way. And I looked down in the comments, a lot of people just didn't even know what Bloober Team was. So, hey, this could be a big moment for Bloober Team if they can pull it off. Now, remember, you're going to have a lot of Silent Hill fans and purists checking this game out. So here's hoping Bloober Team is up to the task. I saw some others online on Twitter talk about how they have been hiring recently as well. So... If they can make this work and get a good Silent Hill game out there, I mean, this could be a massive jumping off point for Bloober Team. So here's hoping. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from King saying they're waiting to announce the Blue Point acquisition at PlayStation Experience next month and unveil their trailer for the Metal Gear Solid remake. Really, if Sony announced that they had acquired Blue Point, I don't think it's gonna surprise anyone. So yeah, they could sit up at the PlayStation Experience with those couches and just be like, yeah, we we went ahead and uh, and picked up Blue Point, they're part of PlayStation Studios now. Everyone be like, all right, cool. But then they would flash Metal Gear Solid Remake up on the big screen and show Snake, and then everyone would freak out. I, th I think that'd be fun, but most likely Blue Point's acquisition will be announced like Returnals, just in a blog post. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Whether well, Nintendo's answers to investors about the Switch revision, or even another classic system, what'd you think about those? Then also, what about this partnership between Bloober Team and Konami, and that Game Boy accessory, the GB Operator? Do you like the idea of being able to pull your save games off of the cartridge themselves for backup on your PC? Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.